So let's open our Bibles to the Gospel of Mark chapter 2. And I, I, wanna, I want us to really zero in on looking at Christ tonight, what he's done for us, what he's accomplished, what he wants to do. And actually, um, I, I'm only sharing four points tonight, but I, I looked at the reality of four, 40 realities that we can enjoy in Christ, 40 realities and you know what god has done for us is so mind-boggling so overwhelming and the natural mind can't understand it and it's such a shame that it's available for every human being and yet many are not taking advantage of it many are not partaking of it many are not eating of it even many of us in the body of christ we're not enjoying the benefits say the benefits yeah. you know i don't know if you ever joined like a club we used to be a part of sam's club and we would go up to Hagerstown all the time. That was years ago. And uh, we'd, my kids really liked to go there when they were little because they'd always head for the free samples. You know, they got free samples of food there, you know. And I think the guys that get aggravated because they'd go in circles and come back and get more free samples. But, you know, if you're a member of, of uh, whatever club, they all have benefits that people on the outside don't have. Well, when you get born again, there are so many wonderful benefits that God has given to us. Um, amazing promises, amazing benefits. And, and when we went to Sam's Club, you, you had to have an ID card, you know. Uh, I know when I was in the military, they had, uh, on the military base, they had a store that had discount prices, and you had to have your military card. And, you know, and so there, there, is, there is an invisible... There is an invisible card or ticket. You know, I don't know how many of you have ever been on a train or a bus or, or, or uh, a ship. And, and to get aboard, you have to have a ticket. Well, that ticket is literally called faith. Faith in Christ. Faith in Christ is what apprehends all the benefits, blessings, provisions. There's 40 amazing realities that I'm just going to share some with you tonight that are available to us, but without faith. Without faith, you can't apprehend him. It takes faith to be born again. It takes faith to receive all that God has for you. So I want us to look here because Jesus is going to heal a man with palsy in Mark chapter 2, verse 1. And again, he entered in a cabernam after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway, many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door and he preached the word unto them jesus preached the word unto them <laughs> why because without uh, without the word you don't know what you have you don't know what god has done for you you don't know the will of the father and that's how faith comes one way faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god by the scriptures and he preached unto them and they came, and they come on to him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, so, so he saw their faith. You can see faith. You can feel faith. You can experience faith. You can perceived faith he perceived that they had faith by what they were doing uh, in their desperate act to get this friend of theirs healed and so he saw their faith now when God sees your faith you get God's attention when God sees your faith when God sees you walking moving trusting and and what is faith faith is when the word of God the will of God the purposes of God becomes more real to you than your circumstances that's what faith is. Faith is when God's word, God's will, God's purpose, God's plan becomes more real to you than what you can feel, touch, see, smell, or hear. It becomes tangible. When God sees your faith, something begins to happen. It says, and Jesus saw their faith. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, now listen to this, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, I, I just want to jump to that right away because that's one of the benefits of being born again, of accepting Christ, is that your sins are forgiven. 
Now, you, you might think, well, what's the big deal with sins being forgiven? Well, let's see what happens. Jesus said unto this man, your sins are forgiven. That, did you know that's the greatest need there is for any human being? You cannot go into heaven with, with unforgiven sins. You, you, you've, and, and, and what can take away your sins? Listen, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Only Jesus. Nothing else. Nothing. There's nothing. Even in the old covenant, the sacrificing of all of those animals, rivers of blood from the time that, uh, and, and, and even after the fall of man, Abel knew that blood was, was involved in covering sins. But all that blood that was shed up to the time of Christ going to the cross, and actually Christ stepping into his ministry, all of those sins were just under the, uh, uh, covered over. They weren't dealt with. They, they weren't, they were just kind of like put in reserve to be dealt with. And there's only one thing that can take away our sins only one only one no, no one else can take away our sins now stop and think about that because it's really sin that has separated man from god and god from man and there's nothing else that can take away your sins that's why it says they overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony by the blood of the lamb the blood of jesus washes away our sins so he said son thy sins be forgiven thee but there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Now notice this. These were experts of the law. Why does this man speak blasphemies? So they're saying what he just said, thy son, thy sins be forgiven thee, was considered blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Did you know that's biblical, that scriptural, that only God can wash away your sins? Only God can take away your sins? Matter of fact, in Isaiah 43, verse 25, I, even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and would not remember thy sins. Only God can forgive sins. Only God. So it revealed to us a reality that Christ was God in the flesh. You know, that's what we're celebrating. His name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. Only God. Now you say, well, I forgive people their sins. Well, well, you might release them from the harm or the damage that they've done to you, which is absolutely required. Because if you don't forgive someone their sins, God said, I won't forgive you your sins. So we have to forgive, but really remember the prodigal son when he awoke in the pig's uh, pen, he, he, he said, I, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my father and I'm going to say, I'm no longer be called your, your son for I have sinned against you and I have sinned against, I've sinned against heaven. So if I, when I sin, that means I knowingly, willingly, purposely go against what I know to be the will of God, that I am not just sinning maybe I, i've done something wrong to somebody uh in some way some form some fashion and, and they, they can choose to forgive me but that sin is now categorized in heaven that, that is sin that sin is 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 put down in heaven there goes mike again <laughs> he just transgressed he just did what he knew to be against the will of god it, 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 look what he's done. And that sin is marked down in heaven. You know, God knows every part of our, our, our life, every part of it. He say, well, why could, would God keep track of our sins? It's not that he wants to. It's, it's just that he's a holy God. He's a righteous God. He's a, he, he, he's a, 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 a pure God. And, and sin is so contrary to his nature and his character that he could not just forgive it. Somebody had to pay the price for our sin. We'll talk about that. That's another benefit is we've been redeemed. <clears throat> the atonement has been made for us. The sacrifice has been made for us. And only the blood of Jesus, only the sacrifice of Emmanuel could take away our sins. Now, the blood of Jesus doesn't cover our sins like the blood in the old covenant. No, it washes away our sin. It cleanses us 
from all unrighteousness. And so they, they were very upset. And matter of fact, did you know that's one reason why they hated him so much, why they crucified him? Because they said, you, you make yourself as if you're God. Nobody can forgive sins but God. Nobody can do away with all <clears throat> the filth of the human heart. Because remember, they knew, they knew that, that the, the animal's blood did not take away the sin. It just covered it over. They knew that. And so notice what Jesus said. It says, why does this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it be easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk but that you may know that the son of man hath power on earth to forgive sins he saved to the sick of the palsy i say unto thee arise and take up thy bed and go to thy way into thine house and immediately he arose and took up the bed and went down, went forth before them all insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified god saying we never saw it on this fashion so i want you to see that in god's perspective Dealing with the palsy was way easier than dealing with this man's sin. Now, it's hard for us to comprehend this because when we cry out to Jesus, right, we repent, we say, Christ come in our heart. I believe you are the son of God. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you rose again. I believe that you're coming again. And when we with our heart believe and confess with our mouth, we are at that moment saved i mean the blood of jesus at that moment cleanses us and is what we call uh, uh it, it, it we we become the righteousness of god in christ jesus his righteousness is imparted into us but now there must be an apprehend of apprehending of righteousness when we truly in our heart cry out to christ at that moment that our sins are washed away now, now stop and think about this. Um, what could you do to get rid of one sin without Christ? What could you do? Nothing. Now, think about this. I don't care how smart you are, how good looking you are, how much money you got, how much influence you've got. I don't care if you're the most powerful man that has ever lived on the earth and the most wealthiest man that's ever been on the earth. You know what? There's not one thing you could do to get rid of one stinking, filthy, little, rotten sin. And now all of a sudden, here Christ is upon the cross. And he cries out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And we see him in our hearts and the sacrifice he's committed. We surrender our hearts. We surrender our lives. And all not one sin the bible says that the very heavens are filthy before god how much more man that drinketh iniquity like it's water all of a sudden we believe on christ and that which is absolutely completely impossible for anybody but god happens you're clean <laughs> i remember when i got clean i was 19 years old in the midst of committing suicide drug addict, messed up, three packs of cigarettes a day, you know, tequila, chewing tobacco, you name it, I was doing it. And I fell to my knees and I looked up to heaven and I cried out to Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, I got up off of that floor, a brand new creation. That's another benefit. You become a new creature. You become a, a new man in Christ as you surrender, as you yield. By, remember now, it's all by the ticket of faith. I don't care if you do have a ticket, if you show up to the movie theater, if you show up to the ship or the train or, or the cruise ship, let's say you're going to go on a wonderful cruise ship, which I guess they're not doing too much right now. But if, he went to, if you're going to go on a cruise and you showed up without your evidence that you have got a ticket, you're not getting aboard. I don't care if you've got the best suite on that cruise ship, you're not getting aboard. I'm telling you that without faith, you're not apprehending what God has for you. So you better get some. Now you got some. He lighteth every man that comes into the world, but you got to develop it. And trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. All of thine heart. And what happens then? Lean not unto your own 
understanding. So when, when you're trusting in the Lord with your heart, you, you kind of take your brain and set it aside, you might say. I, I mean, I'm not saying you don't use your head, but when your head is contrary to the word of God, you make it line up with the word of God. And now by faith, we apprehend what God has for us. I, I have, I have, I, I, I led this lady to the Lord one time, an older lady, and uh, she told me, uh, uh, and I didn't ask her, I did not want to know what she had done in her life, but she told me what she had done, uh, that she had committed adultery on her husband, and, uh, but I led her to Jesus, and I told her, I said, now listen, uh, first of all, you're very sorry. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I, I just grieve over it all the time. It just, I should have never done it. I, 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 you know, I'm so sorry for it. And, and I said, well, I said, you repented, right? Yes, I repented. And, and I said, you've asked Christ in your heart, right? And she said, yeah. And I said, it's all gone. It's like it, it's never happened. Now, I said, sometimes it, dealing with sin is like killing a skunk. The smell will still hang around. You can kill the skunk, but the stink still hangs around. But the skunk is dead. But, you know, I, I've known that lady for probably over 10 years. And almost every time I see her with tears almost running down her face, Pastor Mike, Pastor Mike, will, will God forgive me for what I did back then? And I tell her, sister, it's forgiven. It's forgiven. But she isn't apprehending that forgiveness by faith because of the feelings, the emotions, the thoughts that come to her mind. But she is forgiven. She needs to apprehend that forgiveness by faith, even if her husband won't forgive her. Even if people won't forgive you. Uh, you, you know, I know people say, oh, I don't have no regrets in my life. I think, well, what planet do you come from? <laughs> I have a lot of regrets, but here's the thing. I know that I'm forgiven. I know that I'm forgiven. L L Acts, let me just give you some more scriptures about forgiveness. Acts 531, him talking about Jesus, has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Christ came in order to pay the price to forgive you of your sins. You know, the Bible says a righteous man falls down uh, uh, seven times, but he gets back up. Say, get back up. Uh, Isaiah 43, 25, I, even I am the, he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and would not remember thy sins. How did he do that? Through the blood of Jesus through the sacrifice of Jesus, through the offering of Jesus. Colossians 3.13, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. See, I, I, I was raised in a home where my dad was full of bitterness and unforgiveness, full of it, and it got into me. And so I was the kind of guy that just, when you did me wrong, I just couldn't forgive you. I refused to forgive you. Now, did you know I've seen sinners re for be, have be more forgiving than people who call themselves saints? And, and, and when you really, really, really in your heart have forgiven someone, you, you don't really bring it back up again, do you? <laughs> I've forgiven you, but I'll never forget. <laughs> now, that doesn't mean that if you've done something that was wrong, that you don't have to have fruit or evidence of your repentance. Because I deal with a lot of people out of our prison system, and they'll say, oh, I, please forgive me for stealing $100 out of, your, out of your wallet. I said, listen, I will forgive you, but now I'm not going to leave you with my wallet alone anymore. I want to see some evidence that there's been a change in your life. You know, God wants to see evidence that we've changed. Amen. There is nothing wrong with having evidence because the Bible says, by their fruits you know them. John 20, 20. And when he had said so, he showed on to them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. This is his resurrection. Then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you as my father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on him and saith unto him, receive ye the uh, 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 Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. And I, I think, man, this is a mystery. So now only God can forgive sins, but now God gave us the power to forgive sins. 
I, I can be honest with you. I mean, I don't even remember all the sins I forgive every day, every day uh, of what people have done or what they're doing. I mean, I, I believe it or not, I, I, there's a lot of radical stuff going on in our nation right now. And, and I forgive them in Jesus' name. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe some of you have, and don't tell me the revelation right now. Maybe you can give me some revelation, Howard, of what this really means. Whose sins you remit are remitted, and whose sins are retained, they're still retained. That's, that's a real mystery. But it's like he just handed his people something amazing that maybe we're not really apprehending because we don't have revelation of it and we're not operating in faith it, I, it's way more than just forgiving somebody there's something else involved in this when jesus was on the cross and you know people those people who crucified christ when they stood before god after they died if they didn't repent jesus said father forgive them for they know not what they do you know what it's a mystery but the father did not say to those uh, Pharisees and those Roman soldiers, why'd you murder my son? Because Jesus said, Father, forgive them for that. They were forgiven for murdering. Uh, and, and you know what's amazing is there was a, 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 a lot of persecution through the years for the Jewish people because they say the, the Jewish people are the ones who crucified Christ. There's only one thing. Jesus said the Jewish people are forgiven for doing that isn't that amazing they're forgiven but without the forgiveness of sins you and I would have we would be lost we would be undone and 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 that's one of those 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 amazing realities that we go oh okay but every all those those in hell right now are there because they weren't forgiven of their sins if you and I are not forgiven of our sins, we have no hope. If Christ was not raised from the dead. And so really, I, I think it's one of those things that we don't appreciate. Maybe I'm speaking for myself now. I don't appreciate my salvation the way I should, not realizing that no matter what I had or what I could do or how much wealth or power I possessed, I couldn't get rid of one sin, let alone sins that are piled higher than the highest mountain and deeper than the deepest sea. You say, well, Pastor Mike, I don't sin no more. Well, you're extremely deceived. <laughs> if any man says he sins not, he's a liar. Listen a minute. I hear a preacher say, I'm sinless. I run from them. And I mean, I've heard well-known Pentecostal preachers say they were without sin. I run from them because anything that is not a faith is sin. But thank God for his, his, his forgiveness. Uh, and so that's one of the benefits that we have of being born again. Another benefit is the fact that when you get born again, uh, we're born of the incredible with the seed of the word of life. We're, we, we are, and, and see, here's another thing. And every one of these 40 points we could spend a, a, a bunch of time on. The minute you got born again, do you believe you were translated from the power of darkness into the kingdom of God's dearly begotten son? Do you believe you were once a child of disobedience and rebellion? That's what it says in Ephesians, uh, that, that we were children of disobedience, but now we are children of God. We've transferred families. My wife and I, many years ago, our youngest girl went home to be with the Lord. But what some people don't realize is we adopted her. And we, when we adopted her, the judge, we stood before the judge with our attorney. And our judge said this, the judge said this to us. And he said, I want you to now look at this. He said, this is way more serious than you and your own children. And we said, how's that, sir? He said, your children came. Uh, through natural means, but this little girl now is, you're choosing this little girl, and she is more your child than even your own children. Uh, legally, he said, matter of fact, actually, no one ever even has the right, did not have the right to bring up the fact that she's adopted, because when you sign your name to this covenant with this little girl, her name was Naomi, she is more yours 
than she is your own children because you have chose her and you have a legal binding uh, contract with this little girl. And, and you know, when, when she got hurt, in, and we can't go into the details, it's in our book, but she got hurt in her car seat, and she was hung, and they said that she was brain dead. And we just wouldn't give up on her. And for two and a half years, she took 24-hour care. So when Kathy wasn't working with Naomi, I was working with Naomi. And during those years, and this happened, she got hurt in 1998, went home to be with the Lord in, in year 2000, she was four and a half years old. When, 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 and my children never complained one time, but Kathy and I poured our lives into that little baby. I mean, everything, you had to feed her yet. I mean, you had to take care of her 24 hours a day. We worked with her legs. She was getting so much better. And one night I had her in my hands. It was in July of 2000, I think it was, uh, June or July, and she looked up and her face was glowing. And I said to her, I said, do you see Jesus, Naomi? And, and she just smiled from ear to ear. When I went to get her the next morning, she was gone. Her eyes were closed and she had a smile on her face. But little Naomi was more ours than even our own children. And so I want you to realize that when you accepted Christ, you are adopted into the family and you are considered his child and there's many scriptures that says this romans 8 16 for the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of god and of children then heirs heirs of god and joint heirs with christ if so that we suffer with him that we may also be glorified with him notice it says that we are the children of god say i'm a child of god now how do you become a child of god by faith i'm a child of god so we, we i mean this is so important because I'm going to say this, a, a lot of the issues in my life have simply been because I have not renewed my mind. And an unrenewed mind, and what that means, a mind that doesn't agree with what God says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you can prove that it's that good, except the perfect will of God. So when you don't renew your mind according to what God says and how God sees it, how God does it, and, and how, how, how God... Uh, uh, performs if my mind is not renewed and the devil doesn't automatically know that but he is constantly trying to find a way into our life now I'm not devil conscious but I know that I don't wrestle flesh and blood the devil is always trying to find a way to destroy my marriage destroy my health destroy my in, in my mind take away my peace take away my joy take away my victory take away all of these wonderful benefits that are mine that i can only apprehend by faith but the devil and and when he finds and how does he discover it? he discovers it by what i say and by what i do so the enemy is constantly watching to see what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do. The very first book I ever wrote out of the hundred and, and I looked this year alone, we've, we've, uh, I just, I just published a new book tonight and that's, uh, I did 13 books this year and we've got over a hundred, almost 140 books now. But, but, but the, these, these books are to help people discover what the will and the plan and the purpose of God are. And I got a book out there called I Need God Because I'm Stupid. I know Ray likes that book, don't you, Ray? Because <laughs> it reveals a lot of the areas where the enemy got into my life, and yet God had mercy. Reach for some mercy. I mean, you need some mercy. I need some mercy. But here's the reality of it. I opened the door, not because I needed to have devils cast out of me, but because my mind wasn't renewed. My mind wasn't in line. My mind did not agree. And the Bible says, if two be not agree together, they can't walk together. And because my mind was not in agreement with what God's word said, the enemy had an advantage over me. The moment I get born again, I've got new blood flowing through my veins. I don't, I don't have the natural blood of my earthly father no more. I've got the blood of Jesus flowing through my veins. I, 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 I've, I've transferred from one family to another family. I was once a citizen of the earth, but now I'm a citizen of heaven. Do you believe this? I am a citizen of heaven. As a citizen of heaven, I have certain rights. And, and that's another aspect of this is we have authority now. Because Paul, when they arrested Paul, 
and uh, he, 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 they had him in prison. And, and then when they came to examine him, he said, well, he said, here's a problem, guys. And they said, what's that? He said, I'm a Roman citizen. Oh, they went, they, 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 it, it caught their breath that, that you are what? And, and the, one, the one guy who was pretty high up in the, Roman, in the Roman military, he said, I paid a tremendous price to become a Roman citizen. How did you become a Ro Roman citizen? He said, I was born to it. And he says, because I'm a Roman citizen, I adjure myself to Caesar. For in other words, you, you, can't, you can't prosecute me. You, you cannot punish me. You can't touch me because I'm not a citizen of, of, of your kingdom. I'm a citizen of Rome. Now listen, if, if Paul operated in that realm of being a citizen of Rome, are we not citizens of heaven? <laughs> come on, come on. And so when the enemy comes, we throw it in his face like Paul did. He said, no, man, you, you, you can't touch my body. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It's the house of the living God. And now Paul could have ignored the fact he was a Roman citizen, and they most likely would have let the Jewish people stone him. But the minute that he said he was a Roman citizen, all of a sudden they took the whole battalion of Roman soldiers, they surrounded him, and they took him out of that city to another place that was safe and secure, simply based upon the fact that he was a Roman citizen. Stop and think about this. You are a child of God. Uh, Rome, uh, John 1, 12, But as many as received him to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even as many that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And them that are born of God are like the wind from whence we come and whence we go, no man knows. So there's a divine nature that is imparted into us. It's, it's, a, it's a seed that's got to be watered and nourished. I know I was on the phone tonight with Marshall and him and his family, Fraser, they're headed off on December the 1st first to uh costa rica and he, he he he's you know read a lot of my books and he's always you know wanting my uh my opinion <laughs> and and so he, he was talking about well pastor mike why can't we really why can't we just raise the dead wherever we go i said well i said you're you're talking about the wrong problem it's not the miracles or the signs and the wonders you have it's the fact that if you would apprehend the divine nature of god I said, then miracles would happen because that's where the Holy Spirit moves. The Holy Spirit is looking for a vessel that it is in agreement with the Father. And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And I know I'm throwing a lot of just little information out here tonight. But the more I apprehend the kindness, the gentleness, the meekness, the long suffering, the patience, the goodness, uh, uh, the love, the more I walk in God's love towards people and, and, and towards those uh, outside of my family and those in my family, then miracles would just happen because you'll be moved with compassion. See, when I apprehend, see, faith which worketh by love, I, I know some of you have already heard the story, but about three years ago, my wife and I, she wanted to go to Cracker Barrel and eat. And um, I said, okay, let's go. It was getting kind of late, but we went and had breakfast. As we're sitting in Cracker Barrel in Chambersburg, two ladies began to run through the place saying, is there, is there a doctor in the house? Is there a nurse? Well, most times I would simply get up and go see if I could be of service. But in this situation, we were about halfway done, two-thirds of the way done eating. I, it was in my heart, no, just keep eating. That's what we call being led by the Spirit of God. That's another benefit is that if you're a child of God, if you're born again, if you believed on Jesus, the benefit is that the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. Isn't that wonderful? you got a spiritual GPS built on the inside of you. And, 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 and when you begin to get off of God's will, if you have renewed your mind, it'll go beep, 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 beep. There'll be a warning inside of you. A red light will begin to flash. How many of you see yellow lights? How many of you ignore the yellow lights? I mean, I, I hate to say this. A lot of times when I see a yellow light, uh, uh, the, the gas pedal just speeds up sometimes. But the yellow lights are meant for you to not speed up, but to slow down and put on your brake. 
So I'm in there, and, and, and we got done eating, and we're walking towards the front, and right there as they bring you into the dining room, there's a crowd. I don't know how many people are standing there, or a good amount of people standing there. And I look through the crowd, and I see a lady laying on the floor. She looks like she might be in her late 60s. And when I looked at her, this is the divine nature, the love of God hit my heart for that lady. I mean, it's like it wasn't something I made up or manufactured. It wasn't something I was trying to do. But I had been in prayer. I had been in the word. I had My mind isn't thinking, I need to help her. I need to help her in the sense of I'm going to do something. No, love hit me. Love hit me. It's like that's my mom laying on the floor. Well, here, this lady, I don't know what happened to her, but she up and died. And so now she's laying on the floor at Cracker Barrel, and actually there's a nurse there, and they're waiting for the ambulance to come. And I found this all out as I was moving in the Spirit of God. And the woman, as she was laying on her left side, the woman had a hold of her right hand and was trying to find a pulse, and she had no pulse. The, the heart had stopped beating. But when I saw her, this 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 love hit me and t tears literally filled my eyes i didn't say nothing to kathy i just said uh, excuse me excuse me I i'm a pastor i'm a pastor and i pushed my way through the crowd not not ugly not nasty and i got down on my knees next to this lady and i put my hand on her face and her face was cold to the touch it was it was cold and just, I prayed a simple prayer, didn't pray loud, didn't, I just, out of my heart came the prayer, in the name of Jesus, I command life to come back into you right now. Right now, in Jesus' name, live. The minute I said that, the very minute I said that, the nurse got very excited and she spoke out loud. She's got a pulse. She's got a pulse. So now she's holding, holding her hand and she feels a pulse. The lady who's on the floor reaches up her hand and grabs my hand that's on her face and she squeezes my hand saying, thank you. I'm totally convinced that her soul was hanging in the air over her body. I don't know if she was a believer or not. The Lord just told me. And the minute she squeezed my hand, I knew my job was done. And I simply walked back out through the crowd. My wife and I went out side to Cracker Barrel and here came the ambulance. Now there was no thought in my mind I'm going to do a miracle today. See it just that 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 reality that the father who lives inside of me the Abba father lives inside of me was working. Isn't that exciting? I, I'm, I'm a part of a new family. I don't associate with the old family anymore. What I mean by that is I know what Mike Yeager was like. I know what he was capable of. I know what he did. I know how he thought. I know, you know, I know. But, you know, that old man is dead. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Well, what if the old flesh begins to rise up again like a zombie, knock it back down and put it in the ground? <laughs> crucify it again say no i'll not think like that i'll not talk like that i'll not act like that i'll not live like that see i'm totally convinced the only authority the devil has over my life is in the areas where i am not submitted to the will of god or i don't know the will of god i'm not acting on the will of god that's the only areas. So when the enemy attacks me, and he attacks me all the time, I'm not lifting him up. He attacks me all the time. But this week, something hit my, hit my body. I'm telling you what, man. My, from my waist to my ankles ached so bad I could hardly stand it for about three days. How, I mean, just hurt, hurt, hurt. And about three years ago, I went through kidney stones, which God healed me. And the devil was saying to me, oh, you've got kidney stones again. You've got kidney stones again. Well, you, you know what? I wouldn't agree with that. I would just speak the word of God. I'd just whisper the word of God. I guess this probably went on for four or five days. I mean, all night long. And I'd just say, Lord, I thank you. I'm healed. I mean, it hurt so bad. How many of you ever had your legs and your hips hurt so bad you could hardly stand it? I mean, it was painful. You know what? And all of a sudden, I got up, I think it was yesterday morning, and praise the Lord, all the pains left, and I'm, and I'm okay. See, why? Because now, a, a lot of people, but see, I know my rights. See, one of the benefits of being a believer is by his stripes, you were healed. <laughs> That's one of the benefits. 
and I apprehend it by faith. Now, I'm not moved over the fact because another benefit is the just shall live by faith and not by sight. We don't get moved by circumstances. Tell somebody he's talking about me. Did, did you know all these benefits are involved in your walk with God? I, I mean, you, you I'm think, stop and think about this. This is a benefit of being a believer. Praise the Lord. See, I got so, I, I, as we close here, I, um, I got so hold of this, this benefit of being healed because I, I was born uh, with lung problems, hearing problems, sinus problems. And as a little boy, I still remember being in the oxygen tents in the hospital. My parents couldn't stay with me. It was a nightmare. I still remember laying in these oxygen tents. I still remember as a little boy, my head would get so congested because I have immovable bones. I was born premature with my feet. Uh, my feet were, were, I think they were twisted out and they had to put braces on me. And, 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 and I, I had a speech impediment. You couldn't really understand what I was saying. My sister Debbie would have to interpret it. But when I got born again and I started reading my Bible about by the stripes of Jesus, and I had a revelation of that. I took a hold of it like a, like a starving dog with a, a chunk of meat. I mean, I just grabbed it. <clears throat> Healing is mine. Healing is mine. Healing is mine. I've never let go of it for 45 years. And it was so strong that Kathy and I, we were newlyweds, married for about a year and a half, and we started pastoring in Assembly God Church in Three Springs, and they had an insurance policy. And I went to the board and I said to them, I said, I, I want you to cancel that insurance policy. They said, what? And I didn't ask for the money. I said, save your church the money. They said, well, why? I said, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm not full of pride. I'm, I'm not being arrogant or ignorant. I said, I know that I know that I know that I know by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. I know it, my wife's in agreement. And so we canceled our health insurance. We, we, I have not had health insurance from that moment up to the present time. And you know what? God heals me every time. Because that's a part of the benefit of being a child of God. My sins are forgiven. By his stripes I'm healed. No weapon formed against me will prosper. I, 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 I've got new DNA. <laughs> Aren't you glad? For what Jesus has done for you. Well, we could go on all night. Like I said, I've got at least 40 benefits I've discovered, not including the 7,000 promises. How do you do it, though? you got to have the ticket of faith. you, you got to believe. And, and if, you're, if you're struggling believing, uh, then what you got to do is you got to develop your faith. I've got a book out there called How Faith Comes 28 Ways. You can develop your, your faith. How many of you, uh, to some extent, have developed your brain? Let me see your hands. <laughs> Come on, we're in trouble. <laughs> we got to develop our, hey, you're way better off than when your mother first gave birth to you, right? Back in them days, you couldn't you could even use the toilet, right? <laughs> I mean, but see, so you've developed your brain to some extent. How many of you drove a car here? Let me see your hands, okay? Well, you developed your brain then, okay? Well, if you can develop your, your intellect, your IQ, you can develop your faith. Can you say amen? amen. Okay, let's pray. Father, I, I just thank you. Mm, all the benefits, all the wonderful, glorious things you've done for us as your people, as your sons and your daughters. Lord, may we apprehend. May we take a hold. May we not, Lord, be ignorant or blind to what you've already provided for us. Wonderful, exceeding, great, and precious promises. And Lord, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. amen.